on episode 479 of Nintendo Switchcraft, my thoughts on the Animal Crossing Direct. A classic comes to the Switch, and when is the next Direct? Those stories and more on this episode of Nintendo Switchcraft. Hey, this is Captain Logan, and you're listening to Nintendo Switchcraft. Now, you're playing with power. On episode, oh, I already did that part. Um, the Switchcraft is brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm just going to leave that in. Uh, tune in live over at twitch.tv slash run, jump, stomp. And tomorrow, tomorrow I'm doing the Saturday show, and I am uh, talking about your thoughts about the Nintendo Direct, which happened yesterday. Today I'm going to talk about my thoughts about the the Animal Crossing Direct, and tomorrow is going to be all about your thoughts. So if you have not sent in uh, your thoughts about the Animal Crossing Direct, send them to hashtag AskRJS on Twitter. AskRJS. I also tweeted out a poll asking what you thought of it. You know, did you like it? Was it meh? Or did you hate it? And you can respond to that poll and I will read those comments as well as the comments that come in via uh, the hashtag. I will also be checking our specific channel called the Ask RJS channel on our Discord community. Join our Discord community over at runjumpstomp.com slash Discord. This episode of Switchcraft is made possible by patrons like Joel T. Get Switchcraft and my other content ad-free for as little as a dollar by joining the Patreon over at patreon.com slash run, jump, stomp. All right. We got a lot to talk about. There is a huge, huge press release in the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a huge press release uh, for the Animal Crossing Direct. So there's a lot of information that I want to cover. So let's get into it. Let's get started. Let's find out what Nintendo has to say about it. Let's jump over <clears throat> to the site. It says here, Tom Nook has an eye for business. That's why the staple Animal Crossing corrector took time out of his very busy schedule to host a new video presentation about his latest endeavor, the Nook Incorporated Desert Deserted Island, not a desert island, deserted island uh, getaway package. In the presentation, he details the in and, in and outs of Animal Crossing New Horizons launching exclusively for the Nintendo Switch family of systems on March 20th. It tells us everything that we need to know about it. Well, almost everything we need to know. So let's see what they said. The Animal Crossing games offer players a unique and relaxing escape from the stresses of everyday life and Animal Crossing New Horizons builds on that by letting players build their own island utopia from scratch. Uh, this is coming from uh, Nintendo's uh, senior vice marketing of sales and uh, I'm sorry, senior vice president of sales and marketing. Uh, when the Nintendo Switch owners pack their virtual bags and move to the New Island home, they will experience more ways to customize their Animal Crossing life than ever before. Just like the Nintendo Switch itself, the game lets you play the way you want to play. All right, let's talk about the the things that they are including in this um, Animal Crossing. Uh, first, I want to point out that as far as directs go, while I'm disappointed that this is a direct where we only got to hear about one game instead of what's going on for the rest of the year, this was a really good direct in my opinion. They answered a lot of questions and my biggest question, they answered that one too, is there paid DLC? Are there microtransactions? And the answer to both of those questions for now is no. And I think the microtransactions are gonna stay out of it. However, I believe that after a year, They'll probably start bringing in paid DLC. Only time will tell. I know that um, Mr. Furukawa has said multiple times that he wants more of their games to support paid DLC. All right, let's start by talking about the phone. All right, they include a phone in the game. And it says here, Nook Incorporated will provide some basic necessities and services, including your very own Nook phone. 
At, <clears throat> it has standard apps like a camera and a map, but over time, new apps will be added to support your island needs. The camera can be used to take in-game photos all over the island. You can even add fancy filters like all the cool kids are doing. And they showed the um, the UI of using the phone. It's a lot like uh, Android or an iPhone. And you just tap on the apps and it opens up. One of them will be, hey, you get lost, you get stuck on the island. And somebody might say, well, Bill, how are you getting lost on this island if you have a map? That's a fair point. However, you also have the ability to terraform the uh the island to you know change this hill or uh, make a waterfall here and it's possible that you may mess something up and then be stuck and then you just pull out your nook phone and they call in a rescue helicopter and the rescue helicopter will come along and pick you up i'm betting however that that's going to cost money or uh, you know, maybe either bells or miles. And we'll talk about that in, in a second now. There, Well, actually, let's talk about it now. There's two forms of currency in the game. There's the bells, which we've kind of always had. And then there's the miles. Now, the bells you get by collecting stuff and selling it at a store. And that's what you use to pay off your mortgage and stuff like that. Then you have the miles, which you earn by completing quests. So apparently... In the game, there are now like these quests that you can do, like they'll give you a goal, you go do that goal, and you will get um, miles, which then you can use those to do other things with. So here's what it says about miles. Four players looking for more concrete goals to help offer guidance and inspiration on the island, you can take advantage of the Nook mileage program. As you fulfill certain challenges and experiences, you will earn miles to pay off the cost of the getaway package or eventually to exchange for in-game rewards. Rewards range from in-game Nook Incorporated merchandise and helpful items that can enrich your time on the island to tickets that can, you can use to visit distant islands. Uh, so hopefully that makes uh, a, a bit of sense with the miles. Now, visiting distant islands, this is actually... A really important part of this game, I believe. And l l let's talk for a second about previous Animal Crossing games. Previous Animal Crossing games, they would have a. You could change the clock and the calendar on your uh, on whatever system you were playing on, via the uh, the Wii or the GameCube or the uh, 3DS. You know, however it was that you were playing the game on whatever system, you could change the in the the system settings to a different date and time in order to time travel in Animal Crossing to pick up certain things. So let's say that you you needed a certain thing that only spawns during the springtime in order to complete a collection. You would then set your uh, clock to that certain time, and then you would search for the thing in order to try and complete your collection. And invariably, Mr. Rossetti would yell at you for cheating, essentially. I don't necessarily think of it as cheating, but it's not the way that the game is intended to be played. So what I think Nintendo is doing in response to this, because they are trying to keep people from using the tr time travel thing, way of getting around stuff, is um, these island tours, which you spend um, nook miles in order to go to another island, and it's a randomized island, the pilot will just take you wherever they want on a, this mystery island tour, and maybe you'll be able to complete your collections that way because maybe, you know, you were busy on the last day of spring and didn't have a chance to collect whatever it was that, you know, that fish that only swims around in the spring, you know, you didn't have a chance to collect that fish. But if you fly to some other island and that other island happens to be a springtime island, then you can collect that stuff. And I think that that's why the Nook Miles are in there. And I think that's why the Island Tours are in there. And I think it's really, really great. I think that that's an awesome way. And it, and it avoids the whole idea of changing your system clock, which, you know, that might cause problems with online connectivity if you do that kind of thing. Uh, so I think that's really interesting. Now, land development. I've already kind of talked about this before. And that uh, you can cross 
rivers by using like a pole vault basically. Uh, but later on, if you want, you can build a bridge or you can literally use a shovel and build land between two points or you can cut that land down. And this is this is something that I think is very exciting about that particular about this particular version of Animal Crossing because now you're going to have the ability to terraform your island and have it be exactly the way that you want. And again, this is extremely cool and it will mean that there's going to be a lot of people out there who are way more creative than I am and they're going to come up with some really, really cool ways to take advantage of this terraforming thing. I think that this is a game changer. And by the way, speaking of, well, not really speaking of, just something that occurred to me just now. Good God, this game is pretty. I know that it uses the same um, simple aesthetic, but the th when you see the, the game in motion, it is a very, very pretty game. And it looked like the frame rate was fantastic the whole time. So I'm very excited for this. And uh, I haven't pre-ordered it yet, but I will be pre-ordering this game. I will be playing this game day one. And I will be having a blast with it, without a doubt. I'm very much looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to possibly uh, playing this game with my wife. Because she likes Animal Crossing too. And let's talk about party play. All right? Party play... Uh, with, the new, with the Nook Incorporated Desert Island Getaway Package, up to eight people can live on one island. So, uh, you know, I might set up the Nintendo Switch in the other room, and maybe I'll, we'll put a, an account on my wife's. I, I don't know that she wants to have her own, even though she has, uh, she has a Nintendo Switch as well. Um, I don't know that she wants to have her own game. Uh, like if I told her how much it costs, she'd be like, $60, I don't want to spend that much, you know? Uh, but she might say, yeah, I'll try uh, on your island, and she'll start messing around there. But then we can sit down and play together. You know, everybody in the house, and, well, because there's four people that live in my house, so everybody in the house could all play together if we wanted. So here's what it says. Uh, up to eight people can live on one island. In party play, you can call up to three other players to explore Explore the island at the same time. Whoever calls the others will be the leader, making the others followers. And then you can easily change who's the leader. So if somebody wants to take over so that they can go and use the store to buy something or to sell something, that makes a lot of sense. If you uh, pick up items as a follower, those items will end up going into a recycle box at the resident services building and you can go there and get your stuff out. I think that that's really cool. I love the idea of being able to just sit there all on one screen, no split screen. At least I hope there's no split screen. They didn't show any, uh, but no split screen and just walk around and work together. Uh, my biggest fear, well, my second biggest fear about this game is that they haven't fixed or not fixed, but improved the inventory management the inventory management in Animal Crossing New Leaf was a disaster. It was I just hated it. It it ruined I will I won't say ruined. It it made an incredibly enjoyable game just a little bit frustrating and uh, I didn't really see anything in the in the direct that indicated to me that they have a better inventory management system. However, I will say this Another thing that always drove me crazy about the Animal Crossing games, well, the one that I played, New Leaf, was arranging the furniture in your house was always kind of a hassle. You actually did it as your character and you moved like up to the couch and you would grab the side of it and you would push it or you would push, uh, uh, I'm sorry, push it or pull it uh, or turn it in order to get it where it is. And, you know, they, they realized that, yes, that's more realistic, uh, but when you're you're taking a couch out of your pocket. How realistic does it need to be? Uh, it doesn't. That's the answer. It doesn't need to be realistic. So you can just easily move things around the house uh, without being your character. And I think that that is so, so very awesome. And it makes me hopeful that they also fixed the... Um, oh shoot, uh, the, the inventory management uh, issues that I've spoken about before. Joel Mead 24 says, we need Ross from friends to help us move the sofa and yell pivot. 
and I agree. Uh, so uh, party play is very, very cool. The way that you move your stuff around the, the screen. In fact, I love the way where you can just go into like decoration mode and you can look, you can basically take the 3D model of your house and start spinning it around and looking at it at different angles, which was always like, it was always just clunky and not the best interface before. I feel like they're really nailing the interface for that. And hopefully that, that interface update stuff moves along with uh, fixing inventory as well. Um, this is actually pretty interesting. In addition to and and I'm not going through every single thing that's in the direct. I've already talked for about it for 15 minutes, so I'm gonna move on now. Uh, but before I do, I want to make sure that everybody knows about the. We finally have another app or another uh, game that's taking advantage of the Nintendo Switch Online app. Like right now, our Nintendo Switch Online app has two apps in it. All right, it's Splatoon 2 and Smash Brothers. And that's it. Well, we're finally getting a third one, and it's going to be Animal Crossing. Uh, New Horizons is going to be in here. And it's kind of cool. Uh, obviously, it has voice chat, so when you're playing online, you can play with that, or you can you can work with that. But the thing that I thought was really cool is you can send messages to your friends on here. So I could pull out my phone, tap on the Animal Crossing thing, and say, hey, do you want to play... I don't know, whenever, I mean, obviously I'm probably still going to just use discord <laughs> because the discord is, is how me and my community and my friends all communicate with each other. Um, I, I don't see a, I don't see people in my community using that app very much. However, you know, people who are just looking to play with their friends, they might, you know, tap that button and say, Hey, do you want to help me with something, uh, help me find that last fossil, uh, tonight when we get done with work or whatever and send that message. So they've got text chat right there, um, in the app. Now, why <laughs> Nintendo, why do I need to have animal crossing to have text chat on this app? I don't know. Uh, it would be nice if there was like the voice chat button was right here and then right above it, a text chat button so I could send message to all of my friends and say, hey, when I get home tonight, I'm going to be playing this game. Who wants to join me? That would be really cool. Unfortunately, it is funneled into the Animal Crossing app. Uh, so that's what people are going to be using. And it's called Nook Link. Uh, so it says here, yes, Tom Nook likes to put his name on everything. But when it's a Nook product or service, you know you are getting something that is high quality. With Nook Link, which is part of the Nintendo Switch Online app, you can scan custom QR pattern from previous games. So if you made a custom pattern in a New Leaf or whatever, there's going to be an update to that. And then you can hit a button and it'll bring up a QR code. And then you can you can scan a QR code. So like here's a QR code. I got to change the screen. So here's a QR code for you right there. If you scan that, it would take you to my website but they're going to have a QR code and you can scan it and get access to something that somebody designed in another Animal Crossing game, which is really, really cool. Um, let's see, scan it with your real life smartphone and then download them into New Horizons. When connected online, you can talk with friends who also have New Horizons and Nintendo Switch online smartphone app. Uh, and you can also use the voice chat. It says that that will launch in March soon after you uh, start your deserted island getaway package. Um, what else do we want to say about the game before we get out of here? Uh, oh, yes. This one thing made me a little nervous. And it this reminds me of Splatoon 2 and Splatoon 1, honestly. Uh, in the game... Island-wide broadcast at the start of each day, Mr. Nook, C Mr. Nook, CEO of Nook Incorporated, will make a broadcast to all residents, updating them with the latest on important island events and advice about how to best enjoy island living. I'm telling you right now, Nintendo, if you don't give people a way to skip this, you are going to tick off a lot of people. Splatoon 2, every time I started that game, I had to sit through those two squid ladies 
blathering on about nonsense I just don't care about. I just wanted to get into the game and start playing. Please make it a, a possible thing for me to hold B or something and not listen to Mr. Nook talk about, you know what? Don't, don't put him up there on a podium telling me about this stuff. Just put all of that information that you would normally have him talk about, put it in a list that I can just bring up and say, oh, okay, done and move on. Don't make me sit there and read it. That is going to be very, very irritating. And I am not even a little bit interested. Okay. All right. Let's talk about one more thing uh, for, oh gosh, man, there's so much to talk about. It has Amiibo support, which I'm honestly surprised. So get out to your local Best Buy or uh, GameStop and pick up some Animal Crossing Amiibo. I bet you can get them really, really cheap and they will work. And you can also get an uh, Amiibo cards, um, Animal Crossing Amiibo cards. I don't know what they do in this game, but there is there is in uh, something that they are used for. Okay. The number of um, villagers that are going to be in Animal Crossing New Horizons, 383. Now, that sounds like a lot. That's actually less than we're in New Leaf. I believe New Leaf had 390, and there's only 383. Only 383? I can't believe how many there are. That's really, really surprising. Anyway, I just wanted to let people know about that. Let's take a quick break. We're going to hear from a sponsor. When we come back, let's talk about the next Direct. Stick around. Target announces the grand opening sale of its 19 new Los Angeles stores. Target's exploding prices on ColecoVision. Experience arcade game quality with push-button keyboards and eight-direction joysticks. Complete with Donkey Kong cartridge for just $169.99. All right, let's talk about Chris uh, Sullian who he used to actually work at the uh, official Nintendo magazine um, like back in the day. And he posted a Twitter thread yesterday. It says, I have it on pretty good authority that there will be another proper direct later in February. The source has only been wrong once before, but has been spot on plenty of other times. And this makes a lot of sense that somebody like Chris would have access to this information he knows people that worked with him at the official Nintendo magazine. So it stands to reason that these people would be in the know. And now he knows, and now they know, and so we know. Or, you know, we think, maybe. It's a rumor. But uh, we're all waiting to find out about another Nintendo Direct coming out later this month. The sooner the better, because we don't know what's going on with Nintendo for the rest of 2020. Animal Crossing is it. I don't think I don't think for a second that that is the only big release that we have uh, coming. There's rumors, rumors, uh, and much less, um, much less uh, credible rumors than this one, but there's rumors that the Nintendo Direct that uh, he is referring to is going to be all about Metroid, which would be really awesome. I don't know how much I believe that. It would be wonderful, but we got to remember that whole game, Metroid Prime 4, was scrapped and started from scratch. So, I mean, it depends on how far along they, they were um, when they scrapped it. It depends on how long they were... Uh, working on it before they told us that they scrapped it. So, I don't know. Only time will tell. Uh, but it would be very, very cool to be uh, for, for for us to have another uh, direct in February and to have it about Metroid because I know that that would get a lot of people very, very excited. All right, there's only one more thing that I want to talk about today, and I've been watching the time, and we're coming up close to 30 minutes already, so I don't want to talk about this too long. Sega Ages. Sega Ages is how you do retro games on a modern console. Uh, they take the game, they improve upon it, and then they sell it to you. Uh, is the price fair? I don't know. It's eight bucks, which seems like it might be a little high, but Sonic 2, or Sonic the Hedgehog 2, uh, is... Uh, now available on the Nintendo Switch. This is another Sega Ages game. They have fantastic emulation for the Sega Ages games. 
I have the Fantasy Star version. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have the Fantasy Star game as well as the Virtual Racing game. And they're both really, really fantastic versions of those games. So I'm sure that Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is going to be fantastic. Well, this one um, has, in particular, extra modes. And that's one of the things that they do with these Sega Ages games is they, they add in things that were not in the original. And this one has like a 100 coin, or not coin, what are they, 100 ring challenge, where you have to collect 100 rings as fast as you can or something like that. Um, the Adding things like that into these games is what makes them worth spending the eight bucks on. It's not just the game that you can probably play on your retro pie. It's not just the game that you played already before. It is a game that has new stuff added in, and that makes it more valuable, at least to me. Uh, that It has a competitive two-player mode, um, as well as added features such as Drop Dash. So in the original Sonic 2, they did not have Drop Dash. However, that was something that was added in later, and now Drop Dash has been added in uh, to this one, giving you a, a little more interaction with how Sonic can attack enemies and stuff like that. It also has rankings so you can see how you're doing versus how your friends are doing. It has time trials and they added in the character Knuckles, which I was never a huge fan of, but hey, if you want to climb on walls, then there you go. Um, so that's it for today's episode of Nintendo Switchcraft. Tomorrow is going to be, you know, I already said it, but it's going to be all about the things that you thought about the Animal Crossing Direct, or perhaps if you have predictions for the next Direct, I would love to hear them. Again, uh, use the hashtag AskRJS on Twitter, you know, and you know, also mention me, at RunJumpStomp. It's not, uh, yeah, hashtag AskRJS. I was just making sure I said it right. All right, let's get out of here. Become a part of the community on the Discord, which I already mentioned the URL for. You can get a hold of me on Twitter at RunJumpStomp. This show is part of the Giant Size Team Up Network. If you want to check out the other shows on the network, make sure that you do because those guys are awesome. GSTU.net. And if you're looking for ways to support the show, head on over to RunJumpStomp.com slash thank you. Uh, and please, 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 do me a favor, check out 143 Pixels. Uh, every Tuesday, new episodes come out. Me interviewing a friend about one of their favorite games. This this uh, episode that came out this week, I already talked about it, but I really want people to, to check it out because I'm very proud of this episode. It was really fun. Uh, was me uh, talking to David Brevik, the creator of the Diablo series, about one of his favorite games and how it changed his life EverQuest, also one of my favorite games of all time. So please check that out over at anchor.fm slash 143, or you can go to runjumpstomp.com slash shows. The music you're hearing right now is Corneria Star Fox Remix by Noteblock. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Until then, bye-bye. <laughs>